Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode I was talking quite a lot about my um, outpost up here on Kothar where I'm making the, um, the Iridium and that's been my sort of standard outpost design where I've got a few mines scattered around with trains bringing stuff in from them to a central place where I'm then producing whatever resource it is that comes from that planet and as you can see this is nicely backed up now. Um, I also talked quite a bit about setting up these um, meteorite defenses here and I've now gone round a few of the other planets as well so if we have a look at um, this one Yep, you can see I've got exactly the same thing here. And if that looks very familiar, well, it's because I just copied and pasted it across. And I dropped in one of the umbrella defences as well, because I thought, well, why not? I might as well have that there. Um, I don't think it's going to be able to fully defend against a, um, against a coronal mass ejection, because it doesn't have enough power supplied down here. But there is quite a lot of steam in these tanks, and there's a little bit of power in these batteries, so it might be better than nothing. I thought it was worth trying. While I was over here I did a little bit of tidying up as well because there have been a number of things, I think it was this planet where one of my trains had been hit by a meteorite and um, and had one of its uh, wagons knocked out and there were a few other little bits of damage here and there so I came in and tidied those up as well. I've done the same over on um, on Tulip and this one, the same sort of thing, I had, except here I had a train that had run out of fuel here so I've been up, I've, I've, I've reloaded that one with fuel and then in all of these places I've put in these belts here coming up from wherever the, the, um, the coal drop off is up to just keep the trains loaded up with coal. It's not as, it means they won't go as quickly as if I was using rocket fuel in them all but given, these, given the size of these bases I don't think it really matters, it's, it's, it's plenty. And once again I've put in somewhere, I'm sure I put in the um, defensive the meteorite defense guns as well. Where was that? Yeah, here we go. Oh, over here on the end of the bus. That makes sense. Again, dropped in exactly the same sort of system. The six guns, and they've, and by the time um, and by this amount of time has passed, you can see the uh, the guns are fully loaded now. And this one's killed. Got two kills. So and that one, these two, we've got eleven. So we've had a few um, a few meteorites we've defended against. And I don't know whether those meteorites would have gone anywhere important or not. You can't really tell. But it's good to have the defenses in there anyway. I think. I also started putting together another system here that was going to be um, putting, uh, delivering the Vegemite? No, not what's it? What's this stuff called? The um, Vitamelange, That's the one by by rocket instead. And that is because um, I did a bit of extra uh, rocket maths, uh, as you can see here, because I've done some more research now. So I've got my I've done a few more of these ones. That's the rocket reusability, um, and they're getting rather expensive now, which is why I stopped at this point. But that does mean that I've now got up to the point where if I have a look in here I've got up to um, reusability of 64% so every time a rocket goes up I'll get between 54 and 74 part, uh, rocket parts back um, with it typically being um, well with an average of 64 and that really rather changes the numbers so if you look at this this diagram here I've updated this one um, to show the stats for with a 64% recovery and as you can see it's now for a lot of these things it's about half the price of using a delivery cannon per stack assuming the rocket's full so stone glass iron they're all about half the price um copper is slightly less plastic is close to half sulfur is way under and so so it's, it's now i reckon about with the sort of a bit of waiting because I've, I've worked out how much the fuel costs and it's about it's about 16 vulcanite per stack to get it up there or um whatever that turns out to be or yeah I'm not even thinking about how much that is for a full rocket um, and that's because the, the rocket fuel gets used up you don't get to reuse that so the numbers stay exactly the same between a per stack and a per stack with recovery but that means it's now less than half the price in sort of in resources uh, it's taken it down from about 160 resources to about 74 resources to make it um, and a del whereas a delivery cannon capsule is about 93 so it's now much much cheap well it's now quite a bit cheaper and so because of that I've now tweaked how this rocket rocketry stuff is done over here. So I've still got the same signal being brought down from uh, by this um, receiver here from orbit. And so you can see on here, there's the full list of everything I've got in my um, in storage up in orbit and in the rocket and everywhere and, and everywhere else sort of related. Um, and I've got the still got the requester chest to pull in any anything that's made that it should be going in here. 
But you can now see this mess of belts up here, and it is a bit of a mess, I have to admit. But that's because it was a bit of a sort of a bit of an afterthought and a retrofit. But what all these are is for each of these. So this one here has the uh, the iron and the copper on it. They're split back out onto two separate belts, and then the belts are connected to the circuit network. So in this case, if there's less than zero copper after having the subtractions done, then it'll allow copper through. It'll flow through, and it'll fill the rocket up. And as you can see, the um, the iron, sorry, the steel and the glass are currently flowing. And then once, they've got, once enough has been loaded into the rocket, they'll stop. Now, there's a little bit of hysteresis on this because um, when these turn on, we're not measuring what's on the belts all the way up here. So that means as these start to flow, you'll get whatever is on the belt between here and here plus whatever uh, extra on top of what was wanted. Now, around here, that doesn't matter. It's going to be maybe a 100 extra at the most, probably less than that. Yeah, that's like that's like 50. Yeah, less less than 100. It's probably 50 from those. It's I've also but I've also done that for the stuff that was being shipped up by delivery cannon before. So up here, I've deactivated all the delivery cannons along here that were firing at orbit, and now I've got this extra belt here. So I fed the same signal in up here um, by a sort of a long red wire that's strung halfway around the, around the, this area of the base. Again, a bit of a mess, but never mind. And so again, I've got the same sort of thing here. So we've got the crotinium, uh, no, the cryonite and the um, and the iridium and the vitamelange and stone and holmium, sulfur and ice and sort of vulcanite, but not really, because that's I think that's, I'm doing that further down. And they're all being fed onto this single belt here, and that goes all the way around here and down here. Oh, which one was it? This one. And then in here, and up here, and onto this same belt as well. So that is also getting filled in, f f pushed in there. But this is a much, much longer belt, so there's a much higher hysteresis factor in that. Um, I don't think that really matters. As long as I've got enough storage, then it should be fine. The other thing I've done to go with that is I've set the rocket up to be to launch automatically when the cargo fills up um, so as you can see there's not a huge amount of space left in it at the moment I'm actually going to turn that off again now because I, I want to go up with it the next time it goes so what I'm probably going to do is tweak a load of the numbers to make that a little bit higher have a look up up there and see what I've run out of um, and what's what's being sent as a very very negative number compared to what's um, actually been loaded in uh, because yeah, I mean, I might as well have a bit more stuff up there now. To, now it's only going when it needs 500 stacks of everything rather than one stack of anything. But I think the theory is is quite good. It'll, it'll be a little bit cheaper, and it'll be, it'll mean things like red circuits are going to go up a bit more often. Um, whereas before it was typically only when I went up there because you, you almost never need 500 stacks of red circuits, and the science packs will go up more frequently, and everything and everything else in here. So it should be a little bit more. It should give me a little bit more throughput, basically. That's the that's the idea, um, and to make it a bit more, a bit easier to take up the stuff that's going up in bulk. I've also expanded down here. We've now, got, as you can see, we've got um, twice as many from the original twice as many, so four times as many as I first had uh, of the uh, machines making the substrates. So those are being fed up on mass, and I've finally got enough being fed in here. I might tweak these numbers and take a few more of those up, actually, because I always seem to run out of them. I've also started doing a bit of upgrades as well. So as you can see, the some of these are now um, assembly machine Mark Threes, and I've put in the um, uh, productivity modules as well, because I was finding the the one the biggest problem along here was the was the supply of uh, materials for making them. So let's put in a few more of these as well. The downside of this, of course, is the speed that they're making at, which is why I've now got four times as many as I used to. But as you can see, I'm getting a 32% pro productivity boost, so I'm getting an extra third of the third for free, at least from the Assembly Machine 3s. The 2s are only up by 16%. But in return for that, it bumps the crafting speed down to about a quarter of the normal one, which is not great, but, you know, a quarter of the normal speed add in four times as many and put the, replace the, the Mark II machines which tip by default go at 0.75 with the Mark III's that go at 1.25 it's going to be a bit faster anyway so they've got the various upgrades in there. The other place I've done some similar upgrading is here with the uh, the rocket sections so as you can see these are all upgraded to Mark III as well because these are the limiting factors for building the rocket parts and uh, I've also crammed these full of speed modules mo mostly Mark IVs but I've ran out of um, these 
whichever piece of data it was I needed for those. And that was because I was, um, if I'm starting to send more rockets, as you can see, I've, I've basically used up the entire supply of these things. Now, part of that is because I needed to make an extra rocket here and, and a few more over here. But also, I've got this one over here being filled up with with uh, stacked rocket parts. Um, and the idea of this is I was going to start bringing, as I said when I was on Tulip, I was going to start bringing the resources over by rocket as well. So I can just drop a huge quantity in one go and then not have to worry about it again for a while. The problem is making all of this is kind of part consuming. <laughs> so there's a lot of a lot of resources and a lot of time going into this. But I've put in a, um, a filter on here so it's only going to let them go that way when this rocket is, is full and ready to go. So... Yeah, those are the. That's sort of where I've got to at the moment. I've um, I've got I've I've put in a bit of a few speed boosts in here and there just to try and get these things running a bit more a bit more quickly. Um, I also went over here and finally finished off this. Um, I realised there's a section of defences across here that I'd not finished off. So this is just my my standard design. We've got the robot ports in there that did all the building. Got the the uh, station down here that's accepting the uh, the supplies it needs and so on. Exactly as all of the other ones are. So I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. Um what else was there? Um oh yeah, this is um extremely frustrating. So <laughs> I had a meteorite strike and it took out this pylon. And that has cut off my um, outpost up here from the uh, from its from its nuclear power plant over here. So it's just like that, completely cut off the uh, the power supply. And there's not really anything I can do about this. There's a loose coverage of uh, by the robot ports up here of um, of the areas that of the, of the central part of the of the outpost here. But I hadn't built out anywhere along here, and I certainly hadn't gone out this far. And even if the parts were up there to do to to build them, I haven't got power over here, so none of the robot ports have got power, so I can't expand. So I honestly think there's nothing I can do about this until I actually fly back out there myself, which is really frustrating. Um, in in hindsight, maybe I should have built a second cable running across here for sort of you know um, for redundancy, but well, I didn't. <laughs> it didn't seem necessary. The even more frustrating is that I built up these, um, I had put in the meteorite defence gut turrets, but apparently six of them, not enough. Um, it seems they only have a, something like a, there are numbers for this, um, meteor defence. Uh, so, it doesn't say there. Um, it tells you here the probabilities of getting the certain numbers of meteors. So you get, there's a 50% chance of getting one, 25% chance of getting two, and so on. So the problem with them, though, is that, as you can see here, it's, it only has an 80% accuracy. And you'll be pleased to know I did the maths on this as well. So if there's one meteorite coming in, it's not going to hit unless all of your guns miss. If two meteorites come in, then even if one of the guns hits, if the rest misses, then it's still going to hit. And so on for more and more meteorites until you, until you have eventually more meteorites than there are guns. But as we said, the probability reduces per meteorite. So we get 0.5, which is the chance of one meteorite, times 0.2 to the power 6, which is the chance of all the guns missing, plus 0.25, the probability of two meteorites arriving, uh, times 0.2 to the 5, which is the probability of five of the guns missing, and so on and so on. Uh, that you can then sum together as um, 0.5 to the n times 0.2 to the 6 minus n, um, and then uh, 0.5 to the n for n greater than 6. And that gives you all of these numbers. So we've got the probabilities and then summing them all together. And if you just keep going with that for a little while, then eventually it comes out the probability for any individual meteorite attack of something hitting your um, planet is about 4%. And then beyond that, there's then the chance of whether it actually hits something you care about and whether that thing is destroyed immediately or whether it then gets repaired by the robots. So it's not a sort of a 4% chance per meteorite strike of your base being crippled, but there is a 4% chance of something on the planet getting hit. Because each one of these has a 1 in 5 chance of, of missing. And if you, if you roll the dice unluckily, then apparently it turns out you can miss all of them. Um, so the, yeah, that's presumably what happened over here and how I managed to lose that power that single your singular power pole was linking everything together so i guess yes i'm gonna have to go out and fix that at some point we do have solar over here still so that's a little bit of a backup um but it appears to all be being eaten by the umbrella defense which kind of sucks <laughs> um i wonder if i can just if i take that 
No, I can't. I presumably can't just take that. Or maybe I can. Are there any bots that will work still? No. So because there aren't, because there's no power, I can't do anything about it. It's all just, it's all just broken. That's it. So yeah, I'll have to try not to worry about that. So back down on Norvis. As I was saying, I've got the um, construction of the uh, um, rocket parts going on here. Now, one thing that has occurred to me a bit <coughs> is that I've run up quite a lot of. Let's call it technical debt to use a sort of a, a, a software development term. So over the over the time I've been developing my base up here, it's got more more and more stuff has got crammed into this area, and it's got more and more spaghetti and just generally a bit a bit horrible. So I sort of part of me wants to rip it all out and start again, um, but that's going to be a bit of a challenge. The alternative is to just build it all again somewhere else a bit neater and abandon this area. That's that's possible too. I could do it if I did it up here, then I'd be, it would be nearer all of this stuff and I'd have a lot less um, resource hysteresis whenever one of these kicks in. The similar Similarly, I've got the same sort of problem up in um, Norvis Orbit with my, uh, with my production of science up here. Now, from about probably about here onwards, I guess, most of this is reasonably well organised. I'm um, Want to get down here? I'm pr I'm happy with all of this. This is this is fine. Making the green science, um, the purple science again. Yeah, pretty happy that that's that's gone together quite nicely. Um, this bit up here, generally, yeah, very pleased with that. I think that's I think that's a pretty good design for what I was what I was doing at the time. Um, along here, yeah, this is kind of okay. This 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 bit's slightly crammed in because it was an afterthought because I then discovered I was going to need another temperature of thermofluid. Um, and then this bit, not not so bad. No, oh dear, this is all horrible. <laughs> so I should probably, I don't know. This should this should this should all be different. I should have a separate area off. I mean, the, actually, the, the solar going off up here—that's not too bad. Having that going up this way, I can cope with that. Um, the science should probably be—I don't know. Maybe it should be down here. Maybe maybe actually, here's better. Here's another thought. Maybe it should be up here, off the top of all of this. But then that's all designing with hindsight in mind. Um, then down here we've got this thing built that's dealing with all the scrap. Um, oh dear, that's gone horribly wrong. What? Oh no, that's... Why is this gummed up? Have we... Oh, we've run out of vulcanite, that's why this is gummed up. Okay, so what I was going to say is down here I've been discovering that these recycling machines aren't actually running fast enough. I need more of them. Um, putting in more of the ones dealing with cards wouldn't be too difficult. They could go off over here. But putting in more of the ones dealing with the scrap, there isn't room for them. This, this area is just full, so I'm, I'm stuck, uh, which is a bit of a bit of a pain. Um, so, so, yeah, there's a lot of things up here where, with, with the benefit of hindsight, I could have done them much better much better much 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 differently yes that's, uh, very very differently and, and, and done them in, in a much much better way and with more of the scaffolding available as well perhaps i could have spread things out a bit more so one of the things i'm considering and i haven't really decided whether i want to do this yet um is i'll, I'll finish off i'll finish off the, the tier one space science up here so i'll come up and i'll get the orange one done as well and get that piped in because i've got i've done most of the work for for that up here i just need to finagle it onto this belt somehow and by running it right don't know down here somehow well i'll work it out when i get closer to, to it and i'll probably put that whew, way off down here i guess that's going to require quite a lot of throughput uh, quite a lot of stuff to get this get all the bits i need all the way down here rather but that that's manageable but after that there comes several more tiers of science so if we have a look at one of these machines you can see on this that we've got yeah, we've got the tier one space science, but then we've got the tier two and the tier three and the tier four, and then we've got the black science at the very end. So I think I need to come up with something something different, a better way of doing this for up there. So that's going to be a um, a project for, for quite a lot later on, good a good few episodes down the line, I think. <laughs> but it is something I, I'm I'm thinking about a bit. But I think that comes to pretty much the end of what I've done at the moment. It's been there's been a lot of sort of tidying up. So I've been out to all of the planet, most some of the planets. I haven't been to um, I haven't been to Miokin yet because Miokin's sort of a bit of a weird one. It's not got I've put I've sketched out the I sketched out where I wanted to put things, um, and then I went oh hang on a minute 
there's no resources on this there's no resources being harvested on this planet i've got i'm just pulling this straight in and i've got a big a big box full of um uh delivery cannon capsules over here so this has just been shoved shoved in and sort of this was this was the first one i built so i hadn't hasn't been thought through quite so well so i don't have it i'd I don't have mines for pulling up copper and stone and iron and so on for everything I'm going to need. So it's 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 a little bit afterthoughty. So I'm going to need maybe come out here and do something a bit more drastic to get this up and running. We'll we'll see, but at the moment that's fairly low on my priority list. The next thing I want to do is get the material science up and running. One of the things I have looked into is that all of the material sciences require these um what's it call them? Uh, material testing packs. <clears throat> so I was having a bit of a look into these and it turns out that you can actually build those basically anywhere by hand in in machines down on, on the planet or up in space um, so I thought okay great that's f and it turns four piece four pieces of resource into one thing that you can then take up with you so I thought great that's going to be another candidate for um, for building down here on Norvis and then shipping up on mass like I'm doing with the with the substrates here for the memory cards um, I then did a little bit more investigation into it and that's not such a good idea because as you can see here they only stack up to 10. Um, I made 11 of them just to make sure because I suspected. Uh, so they only stack up to 10 so it's actually not worth taking them up because that's only cause taking up 40 resources worth in one stack is significantly worse than if you take up the, the iron and the copper and the plastic and I think steel all separately and then build them up there because you can fit like literally twice as many, more, two and a half times as many of each one into a stack as you can. Um, you can in, if they're um, if they've been been assembled. So yeah, I won't be doing that, but I will be sh shipping up lots and lots of the, uh, the re required required resources to build them up there. Uh, but once I've done that, it's actually fairly straightforward to make the, uh, the, the those particular is the, the, that particular science pack. I think. I mean, it, I'll probably find out that it's it's not as easy as I expect, but it looks reasonably straightforward it's just a case of making the um, material packs and then feeding in something whether it's cold hot steel concrete uh, and then you just make you can make the packs out of those so I think this shouldn't be too hard but to make them does require um, slightly exotic machines uh, th these ones require the thermodynamics facilities which take electric furnaces, chemical plants and other miscellaneous stuff. So I need to make sure I've got enough heat shielding up there. Um, and then the, the tensile and compressive ones take the mechanical facilities and those are the ones that use gun turrets. So I need to make sure I take some more of those up as well. And then I can build all of this up in space. Well, I have to build all of this up in space because it's made, made in the space manufactory. Uh, and then from there, I, yeah, it, it, I'm not too daunted by this one, apart from the fact that I'm going to be building it miles away from the uh, <laughs> the rest of that bus. Or maybe I'll just do it off the other side of the bus because I've got everything up there now. That I've, I'm, if I'm not going to go any further with the more advanced sciences, we'll see when I get there. I think, but I think that should be, I think it should be fairly fairly straightforward. So how's this rocket doing? Is it full yet? No. So my next thing. Okay. So next things. Look into. Um, bringing some more supplies up with me making sure I've got everything I could possibly want and boosting a lot a bit of the roaring raw materials like iron and copper I think want to be boosted quite a bit and probably steel and plastic and all of the things that are going to go into these material science packs because I'm going to get through quite a lot of that I might take up even more red circuits let's have a uh, maybe more of these substrate things actually because those are things that they get used in, in in large quantities let's have a look is there anything I've run out of copper and coal. Okay, copper and coal seem to be the main ones. So I'll take up a load of those. Also take up a load of um, iridium. Yes, iridium. Uh, make sure I've got plenty of that up here for when I start making these uh, these science packs. That's going to require another one of these little sort of mess things stuck out somewhere. Maybe I'll put it over here. Uh, this is getting a little bit silly. And that should be it and that should be everything I need to get to going with the next science pack so um, I'll do that for the next episode I think I hope you'll join me for that uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you then